Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and in this video, we're going to work through an example of finding the volume of a solid of revolution using the disk method, but uh, where the axis of revolution is not the x-axis. So this example comes from the notes from Lesson 29 in this Calc 2 course. You'll find those notes here, along with these other resources. So the first thing I'll say is you might want to take a look at two resources. Um, the first one is the videos in... Lesson 28, uh, videos 28.1 and 28.2 in this playlist. In those, I talk about volumes um, of solids by cross sections. And I'm going to kind of use concepts in this video here. So I might want to send you over there if you haven't done volumes by cross sections yet. Uh, the other resources, notice that this is example 29.3. So there are two examples that preceded this in the lesson notes, lesson 29. Also, there's a lot of setup and, and um, discussion of the disk method in general. So I'm going to assume that you've either consulted that or you're already familiar with some of that setup. So um, to get into it, uh, I'll uh, zoom in here to the lower right-hand side of the screen. This is the actual theorem. In lesson 29, that is the disk method, and it says if I have a solid uh, of revolution whose cross sections are disks, then if I am revolving about the x-axis and I know what the bounds are, then the volume of S is this. So, um, and then the second part over here is if I'm revolving about the y-axis. So I'm just going to draw you a picture here, um, and notice again that I've already used the word cross sections. So again, this goes back to um, the videos in Lesson 28 and Lesson 28 itself. I'm going to draw you a picture here to give you a sense of what's going on. So here's AB, here's the x-axis. Um, and let's suppose that this is my function y equals f of x. So if I want to revolve this around the x-axis to get a solid, I'm going to try my best to draw the solid that I would get. Something kind of like this, if you can imagine this you know, in, in 3D. Um, if I am going to try to find the volume V of the solid, then really what this formula says is that what I do is at, at a specific point uh, along, you know, between A and B, I look at um, a line segments, right? And then I imagine rotating this about the Y, uh, about the X axis, right? So that would kind of pop out a cross section, a circular cross section of this uh, solid over here. So that would be kind of this cross section over here. Um, and then, first of all, the radius of that disk that I get, the radius r is f of x. The area of that disk, because it's a disk, pi r squared, is pi r squared equals pi um, f of x squared. Okay, and then because the function is not necessarily linear, right, I need to add all the disks that I would get, right, if I kept doing this process. And the way I add that in calculus when it's a nonlinear function is I integrate. So that's why down here you see that this is the integral of pi f of x squared. Okay, so that's just a quick little rundown of what you would do if that's what we were dealing with. Um, and we were dealing with that in the first two examples in this lesson. Let's look at this example. So slightly different, right? Again, this is example three and from the lesson. Um, Instead of reading all that, which you could read, certainly, if you pause the video, um, in this example, we are going to find the volume of this solid revolution <clears throat> obtained by revolving this region about the line x equals, uh, sorry, y equals 1. Okay, y equals 1. So we're not doing a revolution about the x-axis in this example. And that's kind of the point of this video, to teach you how to do that using exactly what we talked about a minute earlier. So how do we do that? <clears throat> um, you can see kind of a, a yellow square here. And the idea here is to borrow everything we just said a minute ago about how the disk method um, finds these volumes. If I were to take this little uh, yellow rectangle and revolve it about this line, y equals 1, then I would get sort of a, a disk, right? Um, maybe not that far. Um, I would get a disk that kind of goes this way, right? And we get this disk. And now the area of this disk, right, is something that I'm going to calculate in a minute. But that would be my effectively pi f of x squared. Again, because it's a disk, right? This particular disk has a thickness, you know, delta x, because it, it started off with a rectangle and not that line segment that I, I talked about a minute ago. But anyway, I still use the same pi f of x squared, but <clears throat> maybe I, I shouldn't say f of x. Um, I'll say pi r squared, same pi r squared, where r is 
is the radius here, right, that we revolved around to get the disk. So I need to find what that radius is. And it's going to be different than f of x, because if I remove the clutter here, right, if we look at this radius, we're looking for this height. Well, the function f of x is this black one. So uh, that's the upper extent, 2 minus x squared. Um, but the lower extent here is the actual axis of revolution, right, which in this case is y equals 1. So the radius is the function 2 minus x squared minus 1. Okay, so that's the big difference here, right? If we were revolving this function about the x-axis, if we were doing this to generate this solid, here's the x-axis, we wouldn't have this minus 1. It would just be like we said earlier, if the function is, you know, in this case, 1 minus x squared, we would just revolve that around the x-axis. I'll just put a comment, by the way. Notice that when I simplify this radius, what do I get? Um, I get 1 minus x squared. So in a way, you know, it's like taking this um, image and just translating it down and then, you know, to, to get this region and then revolving it around the x-axis, right? That's kind of mathematically what we're doing, but um, it's, it's, it's one way to think about it, okay? But uh, from how we've done it here, which is the way I'd like you to do it, um, you draw the plane region and then you look at the radius of one of those cross-sections that you are going to revolve around to make your disk. And in particular, for this example, the radius is f of x minus the axis of revolution, which is g of x is 1. So here, therefore, is our f of x, and here is our g of x. Okay, so that ends up giving us 1 minus x squared for the radius. And then really, the rest of it is pretty much the same. So now that we have the radius, um, one of these disks, this red one over here, right, that we get revolution uh, after we revolve would have area pi r squared um, pi times 1 minus x squared squared and the volume would be the integral of the cross-sectional areas of you know the areas of these disks dx from the leftmost extent to the rightmost extent of the plane region so we go back to the plane region and we're like oh this one goes all the way from negative 1 down here uh, all the way to 1 over here, and then we're left doing this integral from minus 1 to 1 of pi 1 minus x squared squared. Um, we talked about this earlier in the, the videos for Lesson 28. You have lots of options here. You could score this out. Um, I'd probably do that. I wouldn't suggest a u substitution because there's no 2x or negative 2x in the integral. So I would just square this out to 1 minus 2x squared plus uh, x to the fourth. Uh, and then integrate that term by term, and then use the evaluation theorem, and I'll save you time, uh, and you will end up um, getting 16 pi over 15. Okay, <clears throat> so just to recap, because this was something new in this lesson, uh, if you are going to find the volume using the disk method of a solid of revolution where the axis of revolution is not the x-axis, you can see how this would generalize, you know, if the axis of revolution were down here, maybe y equals 1 half. Well, then what would the radius be, right? This would be the radius. It would be f of x minus 1 half. So minus 1 half, and we go off and we would, you know, um, update all this stuff. What about if the axis was down here? You know, y equals, I don't know, uh, negative 4, right? You can, you can keep uh, using the same strategy. Figure out what the radius is, and then that will give you a sense of what the disk you get as you revolve around the x-axis is. That disk has pi r squared area, and r is the radius. So in this case, this top one, you know, f of x2 minus x squared minus negative 4. So we would just go back here and put minus negative 4 instead of the 1 half. So again, you can generalize this to almost any um, horizontal line that you would like. Uh, there are some caveats. Um, like we said earlier, we do, um, for the volume, want uh, the function to be uh, sufficiently um, uh, nice, right? So if we zoom back in here, um, we want, uh, actually, I didn't put it in here, but, you know, you want the function to at least be continuous so that you can find the volume of the solid that you're um, generating. Thanks for watching.